Ooh. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Happy Christmas Eve Eve. Yes, day. it is Christmas Eve Eve day. Yes, it is indeed. Or you could call it Christmas Adam. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it's the day before Christmas Eve. Could That's be silly, honey. Christmas Adam. <laughs> Good morning, Lou, and good morning, everybody who's with us. Good to see you. Nice to be with you this morning. And hello to everyone who's on the phone. Um, good morning, good morning. Uh, it's great to be with you this morning. Uh, uh, today, uh, we're excited about uh, what's coming up. I uh, hope you are as well. Yeah, good um, morning, Joe. The journey to Bethlehem. Hey, oh, Janet. Hi, Janet. Good morning. Hi, Deb. Yeah, good to be with you all. Hi, Julie. I was just, uh, Ju uh, Janet, just ringing the chimes this morning. <laughs> uh, so um, I'm not doing it tomorrow, but uh, just uh, to have it all set up. We're getting it all set up, and so that's exciting to have those ready to go for tomorrow night. Uh, the chimes, the chimes. Um, All right, let's let's start. let's begin. You let's have begin. the uh, verses here. I do. They're right here. All right. So mm -hmm. Psalm three five. Psalm three five. Uh, I lie down and sleep. I wake up again, for the Lord sustains me. I lie down and sleep. I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. Uh, I I don't know about you. Maybe you're feeling a little like you've slept through this year. It's kind of weird, uh, strange that mm -hmm. it's already Christmas. Uh, that 2020 is hopefully almost done here shortly. Uh, but it's kind of been this I don't know kind of strange thing. But uh, you know I don't want to be a person who just kind of sleepwalks through life. Uh, and I think this verse is you know reminds us the Lord refreshes us. Um, but he also calls us to wake up um, and uh, to know that even in the struggles and difficulties of the life that he sustains us. And, and we don't want to be people who are kind of sleepwalking through life. Yeah. We want to be really living life. Uh, and we can live that life as part and members of the family of, of God. Uh, and that, that reminds us that we, we are called to, <coughs> as we live this life, called to live by faith. Uh, and faith is kind of this thing that's out there, right? You know, um, but uh, Jesus is very clear. He says, truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And that's from Mark 10, 15. And, uh, you know, how we are, are called uh, to be people who receive this gift mm -hmm. uh, that God uh, gives to us, this new life, uh, and wake up to it and, and really live it. Um, and so I think those are some really powerful words for us uh, today, um, you know, that we can, we can uh, take hold of this kingdom that God wants for us uh, and, and live as, uh, you know, live as a child uh, in it with, mm -hmm. with eyes of faith and excitement. Uh, what a joy and wonder. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, certainly uh, in these days. Um, but we know life isn't easy, um, and we saw that we started to hear that yesterday in the story of Stephen, and we're going to pick that up today uh, from Acts chapter 7, verses 4 through 16. Uh, Acts chapter 7, 4 through 16, the story uh, of Stephen, but how he shares the story of God's family. And I think it's important uh, that we don't miss out on what God's doing in the family and has done. If you, if you forget history or sleep through history, you tend to repeat it, and we'd rather not do that. Okay, so I'll read Acts 7, starting at verse 4. And if you'll remember, Stephen just started speaking and um, really um, started with Abraham and reminding them of Abraham. It was really um, tapping into their story, their heritage. So I'm picking up at Acts 7, verse 4. So Abraham left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After the death of Abraham's father, God sent Abraham to this land where you are now living. He's speaking to the Jews. Stephen is speaking to the Jews. He gave him no inheritance here, not even a foot of ground, but God promised Abraham that he and his descendants after him would possess the land, even though at that time Abraham had no child. 
God spoke to Abraham in this way. Your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated 400 years. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, God said. And afterward they will come out of that country and worship me in this place. Then God gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision, and Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised Isaac eight days after his birth. Later, Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob became the father of twelve patriarchs. Because the patriarchs were jealous of Joseph, they sold him as a slave into Egypt, but God was with him and rescued him from all his troubles. God gave Joseph wisdom and enabled him to gain the goodwill of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So he made Joseph ruler over Egypt and all his palace. Then a famine struck all Egypt and Canaan, bringing great suffering, and our fathers and mothers could not find food. When Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our fathers on their first visit. On their second visit, Joseph told his brothers who he was, and Pharaoh learned about Joseph's family. After this, Joseph sent for his father Jacob and his whole family, 75 in all. Then Jacob went down to Egypt, where he and our fathers died. Their bodies were brought back to Shechem and placed in the tombs that Abraham had bought from the sons of Hamor at Shechem for a certain sum of money. So, uh, and there's more tomorrow if you want to read because it goes on to Moses. But here, Stephen is reminding the Jews of uh, their heritage, their, their story, their family story, how God intersects that. And also shows um, a couple things. One, how their ancestors got off track. And it's easy for us to get off track and... Um, and so it's good to remember that. Also, um, Stephen reminds uh, the people of God's rescue. See, God's story is always about um, redeeming, uh, restoring, and rescuing us. You know, God is always up to deliverance. Um, and you see that story here of how God delivered the people in their time of famine. Um and we're going to celebrate that tomorrow and, and on Friday, uh, that ultimately God sent Jesus to deliver us. And, you know, as followers of Jesus, the, the most basic thing that we can hang on to is that God is with us, um, that Jesus literally is with us, and then died and rose again uh, for our ultimate restoration and deliverance. Um, and so... Sometimes family stories can get complicated, um, but to remember that God, for us to remember that God is always up to redeeming work, and that's what we celebrate this week, an uh, incredible sweetness that God is with us and brings deliverance and did that through the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we can cling to that really simply and tightly like a little child. Yeah, and I think what's cool is God provides for us on this journey, Yeah, yeah. you know, and you know, the rescue doesn't happen necessarily right away for Israel. 400 years, yeah. they're in bondage to slavery, uh, you know, but God is with them and God provides for them. Uh, God had a plan beforehand uh, to have Joseph there um, and to have a, a, a land for them, even though uh, Abraham had no, he had no land, yeah. he had no children. Yeah. And uh, God provides for us along the way and we have to trust and live as, as children of, of faith. Uh, mm -hmm. like Just like the children of Israel trusted that their food would be there every day, that God would provide, God would redeem them, God would rescue them. So we are called to live by that faith, trusting that God will provide, that God will rescue, that he has already rescued us in Christ. And this whole story is obviously pointing pointing to Jesus, uh, is what Stephen is doing here uh, as, as he speaks to the Sanhedrin, uh, those who oppose him. Um, and uh, telling this story uh, of God's rescue plan, and, and we're a part of it. And that's, that's really what's so exciting about uh, what we celebrate uh, this Christmas season, uh, that, that, God is, that God is with us and he rescued us. Yeah. Uh, this morning, um, well, the, the last few days, what's been going through my head is um, a friend of mine reminded me of the words of this song, O Holy Night, A Thrill of Hope, the weary world rejoices. 
Um, and um, we have a thrill of hope that, that we have Jesus as our Savior. And so um, I think this morning for the places of our weariness, we took that in. Um, and for the places where you may feel weary um, today, this week, um, this month, this year, um, take in a thrill of hope uh, that we have a part in God's story and that Jesus has come for us. Yeah. A couple of prayers. Uh, I know we're praying for Vicky's. Uh, yeah. Let me get a paper. Uh, Vicky's niece, uh, her, I believe Ariel, Ariel. her name. Uh, she's in the hospital with pancreatitis. So we pray for her. Pray for everybody who's dealing with the COVID stuff, uh, you know, and how it affects families and people and uh you know everybody in different ways so we pray for for those uh, families who are dealing with that for uh, laura allison's sister-in-law sister for for the recovery the recovery um miraculous miraculous how she has um, come so far so we're grateful for that um for bailey ward's friends family mm -hmm. and um uh, for those that are um, discouraged and brokenhearted. Yeah. Let me see here. I was just going to read that prayer from here. Is that it? I got it. it. Okay. <laughs> um, let me pray. Loving Savior, our preparation is drawing to a close, and we are eager to receive you anew. Mm. Anticipation builds within us. Open our hearts, gracious Lord, so that we may arrive at the manger with deep humility and a strong desire to serve you. Lord, uh, we are so grateful that you, uh, that you provide for us on the journey. Uh, you've been with us this year uh, as we journeyed through a, 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 weary, a weary year, a weary world, uh, and yet we have reason to rejoice. That you are with us and that you deliver us uh, from our enemies. Uh, you restore us through the death and resurrection of, of this one who has come for us, God in the flesh. And Lord, we take that in this year, um, that there is, there is certainty in, in uncertain times. Um, and that we want to just behold what you are doing. I really fix our eyes on, on Jesus at this time. And know, Lord, that, <clears throat> that you are with us that you will carry us through, for you are a God who has made us a part of the family, a God who provides for us, a God who keeps his promises, and so, Lord, we trust in that uh, this day. Even in those hard places, and there are hard places, uh, in this season of COVID, many families have been disrupted, uh, family plans, family lives, uh, in big ways and in, in small ways. Uh, Lord, uh, we certainly pray for the families of those who've lost loved ones, who yeah. grieve, uh, the pain and uncertainty and the fear and the stress that goes along with the, the illness. Uh, I don't think if you have, haven't experienced it, uh, you probably don't know exactly what it, what it means. Uh, but there are many who are hurting, and so we uh, commend them to your care today, Lord. Um, and for those you know, family plans that have been interrupted as a result of this and a different kind of Christmas, uh, Lord, um, <laughs> you're still coming. Uh, and we're still celebrating your birth, uh, no matter what the circumstances around us may be. And we're grateful we can do that. Uh, pray for those others who are struggling. Ariel, uh, dealing with pancreatitis. Uh, <clears throat> um, just uh, give her healing and restoration. We pray for the families of, of Bailey Ward's friend, uh, who obviously are shocked and, and, and hurting desperately at this time, the loss of a young life. We pray for those who are discouraged and brokenhearted, Lord. Bring your peace uh, to us uh, today. Uh, you are the Prince of Peace, and uh, we are grateful for that uh, today. And, uh, um, you know, uh, the thrill of hope is, is right around the corner. Because uh, you are, you're, you're co you've come, and you're coming again. And so uh, we can live in that today. Uh, Lord, uh, we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys have a great day. Um, we will see you tomorrow night. Uh, we got church at 4. 4.30. 4.30 and 7. Uh, there's a couple places available if you're interested uh, in joining us for in-person worship. 
uh, tomorrow night, um, 4.30 and 7. And, and it'll be live streamed both live stre times, live 4.30 stream. and 7. And then on Christmas Day, there's still space available uh, mm -hmm. at 10.10 10 on Christmas Day. Again, live streamed. Uh, you're welcome to join us on the 27th, uh, that Sunday. Uh, I know there's spots available on that <laughs> Sunday. Yeah. So, uh, we miss you all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just a joyous uh, Christmas to you all. Uh, if we don't see each other face to face, uh, you'll probably see my face, mm -hmm. but I won't see yours. Mm -hmm. So uh, I extend to you the, the warmest Christmas greetings and wishes and blessing. And can't wait uh, to, to be together for sure. And uh, we're, we're moving toward that. So we're grateful. Mm -hmm. All right. You guys have a great day. And we will uh, see you tonight. No, tomorrow night, right? Don't scare me, Joe. I think it's tomorrow night. I'm, I don't think he's ready yet. I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not, believe you me. All right. Uh, all right. Good to be with you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.